Museum of Science and Nature, and I'm here with one of our animal care specialists, Mandy Deardiff. Say hi, Mandy. Hi. So we're here today to talk all about manatee rehabilitation. You guys might know that we are a second stage rehab facility for manatees here at the Bishop Museum of Science and Nature in Bradenton. And so what that means, Mandy, is that we do what? So we actually um, open up space at manatee hospitals for manatees that need critical treatment. So they're taking critically injured, critically sick, and orphaned manatees, and there are only four hospitals, so eventually they will get closer to capacity. So they do need to move stable manatees that aren't quite ready to be released to another home, and so we will take some of those manatees. That's where we come in, right. Okay, cool. And so we have big news that we're sharing first just with you guys, and that is that yesterday, we released one of our manatees that we had. We had four manatees, we now have three, because yesterday, Kali was released back to her home waters in the wild. So I'm sure that was a big deal. I mean, you guys have done this a lot, but every time has gotta be special, right? Yes. So tell me about what it's like when you first see the manatee go, See you later, I'm gonna go home. What, what, what is that like for you? Um, it's a very amazing experience. It's also very emotional. Um, not because um, I'm going to miss Kali, which I will, but it's because she's getting a second chance at life and she can go out there and have babies maybe and you know live a wild life um, for as long as she possibly can and that's really exciting for us to see. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that must be like just an amazing feeling. I it can't is. imagine. Yeah. So how did Kali find her way here? Why did she need to be rescued in the first place? So she was actually rescued for a watercraft collision injury. Um, that's very common out in the wild, sadly. Uh, there are two different types. Most people are familiar with propeller injuries, which she also had propeller scars on her body. Um, but a lot of people are less familiar with impact injuries, and those tend right. to be more severe because the impact will break their ribs, and since their lungs lie right underneath their ribs, uh, they usually will puncture their lung when they break. And then that air has to go somewhere, so that hole releases the air into their chest cavity and makes them excessively buoyant, which leads to inability, inability to regulate buoyancy, um, um, they can't eat, they get very sick, and so it's just very bad for them. Okay, and so that's what happens to Kali, the impact injury? Yes. Wow. So she had um, a right lung puncture. Okay, all right. And so by the time that she got here to the Bishop, which is a second stage re rehabilitation facility, as you said, she'd been stabilized from by the Manatee Hospital. She was doing fine. Correct. Ish. Um, so what is the job of um, our second stage rehab facility here at the Bishop? When we have the Manatees here, what's, what's their job and what's our job? How do we help them do their job? So our goal is to get them healthy by giving them food, making sure that they're eating and putting on weight. Um, Kali, even though she was stable, she was still healing some ribs and eating food helps the healing process. Okay. Um, she was not able to be released from the hospital because of red tide in her release okay. site, so we were giving her a safe place to eat, put on weight, um, until red, si red tide subsided. Um, so we mostly want to get our manatees healthy here by providing them um, opportunities to forage on different types of foods and getting their appetite back up. Okay, great. And so how long was Kali here about? Uh, she was here from December 10th until yesterday, so a couple months. A couple months. Mm -hmm. And um, in my experience working at the museum, that's a relatively short period of time. Yes. Um, but she had be already had a lot of good time at the hospital then, right? Yeah, she was rescued on um, June 11th, actually. Okay, all right. And so when you, we're here today to talk about the, the manatee releases. So when you guys are getting ready the day of to release a manatee, what is your, walk me through what, what that day would, would be like. Like, how would it start? How do you get the manatees loaded up into the truck? And, and how do you get them back to where they need to be? Um, it is quite a process. So we do need people to do health assessments. We want to make sure we get blood work done, um, different length measurements and girth measurements around different areas of their body because we want to know how much weight and how much bigger they've gotten since they've been here. And that's especially important when manatees are orphaned um, due sure. to size requirements. So we have to have people helping with the health assessment and then also um, people available to help us load the manatee into the back of the truck and then when the, whatever manatee is back there. So yesterday when Kali was in the back of the transport truck, um, we are responsible for monitoring her respirations, making sure that she is doing fine back there, that she doesn't get too hot or too cold. So we have um, everything we could ever need, blankets, water buckets, oh, sprayers, right. sponges, um, really anything to make sure that she's doing okay. And then we just monitor her and make sure she's as comfortable as possible until we can get her back in the water, which we try to do as soon as we can. Cool. Yeah. So 
I, I want to back up too. How how do does a decision get made on when a manatee is ready to go out again and, and be released to their home waters after they've been in a second stage rehab facility? So there is no one size fits all for that. Okay. It's, it's different for every manatee because they are all individuals and they all have their own story. Sure. Um, but we're part of a manatee rescue and rehabilitation partnership, which includes every organization that is dedicated to helping manatees. So governmental agencies like Fish and Wildlife, Fish and Wildlife Service, USGS, and then all the hospitals and rehab facilities. And they actually, the MRP or the Manatee Partnership, they yeah. have different committees. And one of the committees is the release committee. So they call each other weekly. They have conference calls and they discuss all of the manatees that are approaching their release date um, and kind of determine what would be best for them. Um, just given why they're in the hospital in the first place, um, things about their release site and area. Um, so they, they'll just take every manatee and their individual stories into consideration. That's really cool. Yes. And, and you said it's there's a lot of people, I mean, caring for manatees and other marine wildlife is basically what they do. Yes. So that mm -hmm. when they make the call, they know it's the right decision. Yes, yeah. and even the scientists who are um, involved in monitoring them once they're released, their post-release monitoring, they're involved in those calls as well. So it's everyone. Yeah. Everyone just wants them to have the best chance um, at their second chance at life and, and set them up for success. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So one of the things that I always hear people say when they meet you or even when they're just wandering around here is they say, God, it must be so cool to work with manatees. Like, that's your job. What a dream job. And I'm sure you would agree. Yes. But there's also, I think, a bit of a misconception that like you get to just hang out with manatees all day yes. and, and be with them. And that's not what your job is about. In fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, you guys have made it very clear that like you want to have as little contact with the manatees as possible while they're here. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So tell me why is that? Well, manatees actually do not have any natural predators and they only have two natural threats, cold stress due to cold water and then red tide. Um, so the other threats that manatees face are all human related. So we okay. never want them to get too used to people because for them to want to approach people out in the wild for food or interaction is only going to put them in more harm's way. Um, manatees, um, they don't get a lot of time out there. So we want to make sure that they're set up for the most successful release possible, which means no human interaction or them at least not wanting to go to people. Yeah. And manatees inhabit shallow coastal waters already. So they're already Which is areas. where there's a lot of humans. Yes, boats and people swimming, fishing. So we just want them to be as far away from people as possible. So what should people do if they do happen to be lucky enough to see a manatee in the wild and get close to one? Practice passive observation, so observe their beauty from a distance because they are beautiful animals yeah. and it is very rare to see them out in the wild, um, but there aren't very many of them out there either, so we want to make sure that people aren't touching them or feeding them or giving them water from hoses, um, chasing them, harassing them, anything that disturbs or disrupts their natural behaviors. And a lot of times if people do see a manatee in distress, the first thing they want to do is help the animal. Yes. So instead of trying to interact with the animal to let give it water or try to hold it up, for instance, um, in a true effort to be helpful, those things might be counterproductive and yes. might actually hurt the animal, right? And people can actually get hurt too, depending on the size of the manatee. Um, manatees are very gentle animals, but they're scared when they're injured or something's going on. They don't know that they could hurt someone, Yeah. Um, but people can definitely get hurt if they get too close to manatees. Um, out there even if they're trying to help yeah so it's always best to, to call fish and wildlife and let them figure out the next steps so that's my next question so if people want to if they see a manatee in distress and they want to help what's the best thing that they can do they can call 1-888-404-FWCC and that is for really any animals dolphins whales not just manatees oh, okay. so if you ever even think that there's a sea turtle or a manatee or anything in distress even if they're not, it's always better safe than sorry. They're the experts. They can send someone out to assess if that manatee or other animal needs help, um, and then they'll kind of determine where to go after that. Very cool. Yes. Well, we don't have any questions, but I do want to say that we have a lot of thank yous. Uh, Jenny says, thank you. thank you for all you do for these amazing creatures. Kathy says, thank you. Di says, thank you for helping manatees and being a part of our community. Um, so it's, we're getting just so much good feedback from people. Lisa says, thanks for all that you do for the manatees. So, and I see that you are tearing up just a little bit because 
So I have to tell you, before we got on air, Mandy was very excited about doing this, also very nervous, but the main thing that keeps her going every day, and she would never say this because she will start crying, is how much she loves working with these animals and how much they mean to her. So I will all, only ask you to say yes, true? Yes, very much. She is, um, she is one of our stars here at the Bishop. She is so dedicated to these animals and so dedicated to making sure that they have, they're successful while they're here and they su they're successful after they leave and I'm actually starting to tear up a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, this is just such important work. So even though I get the privilege of working at the Bishop and I get to see these guys every day, um, it is, I, I still am so in awe of the work that you guys do. You, yourself, Mandy, but also the work that all of our manatee care staff do because it is so important and especially when you consider that not only are they just cool to look at, but they are really, they're, they're our state marine mammal. Mm -hmm. They're a big deal in Florida. They are, yeah. And so we need to do everything we can to protect them, okay? Yes. Oh, I'm and we, we do, like you said, it takes a whole team and our team is, is amazing. So yeah. we couldn't do it by ourselves, for sure. Yeah, definitely. It does, like literally it takes a village. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching today. Um, if you have kids, don't forget, tune in tomorrow at three for Tales Under the Tree. That's a little story time for uh, younger kids and their grown-ups. So hope you tune in. Thanks. Bye-bye.